So now let's talk about how infection spreads from person to person. So until now, we've been discussing the physics of droplet transfer uh, by respiration between a pair of individuals. But let's say one infected person does manage to expose and infect another susceptible person. Then the dynamics of that population within the room and more broadly in a whole, uh, let's say, city or country will change with time. So there have been many models, uh, and these are central to the field of epidemiology, uh, to describe the dynamics of uh, disease uh, in a population. And this work began with the classical paper of Kendrick and Kermack in 1927. And these types of models are called compartment models because the population is broken into a bunch of compartments. So for example, if there are N people in the population, then the original uh, Kermack uh, Kendrick model is an SIR model where there are three compartments. There's the susceptible, so those are people that have not yet uh, been exposed uh, to, the, to the pathogen or not been affected anyway. There's an infected group which has become sick from the pathogen and is also able to transmit that to others. And then there's R is the recovered uh, population that's already had the disease but has now gotten over it or been removed either by recovering or possibly by dying or maybe by leaving. <laughs> well, I guess they don't leave because we add up to, to N here, although uh, that really wouldn't change much. Okay. So basically, the equations then are just simple rate equations that are very similar to those that are written down in chemical kinetics and chemical engineering, where there's no spatial resolution. And effectively, we have the assumption of a well-mixed population. So if you don't like the well-mixed room, this is an even bigger approximation. This is the well-mixed population. There's no information here about how people are actually interacting with each other, what their network of contacts is, where they're physically located in certain buildings or certain communities. Everybody sees everybody else, and then there are certain kind of global rates that are written down. But like the well-mixed room for indoor situations, uh, you know, this is a reasonable starting point, and that is how people think about uh, disease spreading. So, in the simplest SIR model, there are two rates that we need to uh, use as parameters. One of them is beta, the transmission rate, which is the same rate that I defined earlier. And that is the rate at which infection is passed between a pair of people, one of whom is infected, the other one is susceptible. So the reaction rate, if you will, is beta SI. That's the, and then when that reaction occurs, you lower S and you increase I. A second process is the recovery or removal. And so that's accomplished at a rate gamma. And so when an individual is removed by recovery or by death, uh, they are removed gamma i, and then they kind of get added to the recovered uh, pool. Okay, so this is a very simple model, but it's not a trivial model. It's nonlinear because of the product of S and I, so it's not so easy to write down an exact solution to this full model. Um, and in fact, uh, you know, more complicated models exist and they're even harder to solve analytically. But we can still get a lot of insight uh, from, the, from the model. And the primary insight that we can obtain even from this simple model is whether or not an epidemic will occur. And so the way to understand that, so an epidemic will occur if, well, DIDT is positive, so if the rate of number of infected people is obviously growing. But we need that to happen in the early stages. So that would be where S is close to N. And maybe the very beginning is if we really have a discrete population is that S is N minus 1. So if we really don't have a huge population, I can actually count them. I might say S is N minus 1. There's one infected person. Everyone else is susceptible. Maybe more generally, we'll have an S which is of order N. So, you know, S is maybe a little bit smaller than N, but, but you know, not, not by a lot. And in the case I just described here, I've got I equals 1. Um, and then R is, of course, equal to 0 at the beginning. Um, and whereas normally we might say S is much, it's of order N and I is much, much less than N. So basically, in a situation where there's very few infected people, the question is, is the epidemic going to grow? And you can see it very clearly from this rate equation right here. So if um, i is a small constant number, like for example, one, um, and then the s is near n, and in particular for the case of one infector, it could be n minus one, then we find that if the following ratio is positive for the first infector anyway, 
um, we get this condition that when beta the transmission rate times the number of susceptible people, so I can also write this as sort of S0 is N minus 1 is the number of susceptible people initially times beta. So that factor, uh, if that factor is greater than 1, then the epidemic starts growing because basically you're producing more infected people than you are removing them at a different, you know, at a faster rate. So it makes sense. So then you start to reach kind of an exponential growth phase of the epidemic, which only saturates when you start to kind of uh, run out of people to infect because the number of susceptibles is going down. And then it kind of saturates and, and, and the epidemic sort of uh, slowly comes to an end. This quantity here is called the reproductive number. And basically, this is the expected number of people that one infected person will infect. So you can see here, it does include the whole population. This is this well-mixed population concept that basically each person is, inter is interacting with everybody else. That may or may not be a reasonable approximation. But what we can do is sort of lump this parameter here um, and define what maybe we could call uh, beta hat, which is um, S0 beta or in the case of um, I zero equal to one, uh, that would be uh, N minus one uh, beta. And then of course we get that R zero is the ratio of beta hat to gamma. You'll also find the reproductive number written that way where you've kind of lumped kind of the number of people that are interacting with a person into a single parameter. So it may not be that the, you're interacting with the entire population, maybe you only see some subset, but in the end there's some kind of exposure rate which needs to be divided by the removal rate. Okay. And what you get from solving this model looks like following. So uh, if this parameter R0 is greater than 1, so if you actually do have um, uh, a positive reproductive number, uh, then if we look at sort of the different population variables, well, let's see. The number of susceptibles starts very close to n. Maybe there's one infected or a small number of infected people. But over some time scale, that starts to go down. And what is that time scale? That time scale is beta hat inverse. So it's basically the inverse of this right here. That's how quickly new infected people are being created. And that's how quickly the susceptibles are going down. So this is S. As S goes down, then I goes up with the same rate. And so uh, basically S is just switching place with I. So here's I. But then I might not go all the way to the top. So I've sketched it getting pretty close to M, but it doesn't need to go that high because it's going to start coming down because S is going to zero, right? So as S goes to zero, this rate actually also goes to zero. So you're not producing infected people as quickly. So this at first is an exponential increase, and then it kind of starts to tail off and eventually comes down as you run out of people to infect. So at this point, the susceptibles are going to zero, and so you're basically infecting everybody's left, and then that curve starts to drop off as well. And meanwhile, uh, when that drop off starts happening, then the recovered fraction starts to pick up. And in the end, you're left with all recovered people. So this is basically the typical picture of an epidemic. When R0 is greater than 1, you have kind of this uh, you know, cascade of sort of different compartments of the population, uh, kind of trading places uh, in terms of their uh, prevalence in the society. And the model is governed by sort of very simple you know, kind of mean rates of transfer.